first of all, before I start, I want to tell you guys up there, don't stamp on the floor because that can cause a cave-in, and we don't want that. <laughs> if you do that and we see you, you're going to be asked to leave, so fair warning. Okay. Um, Thompson's journalistic career seems to have meandered through, from mainstream to left field. Beginning in 1959, with a one-year stint as a Caribbean correspondent for Time magazine. Thereafter, followed assignments with the New York Herald Tribune, the National Observer, the Nation, and Ramparts. Readers of Rolling Stone remember Thompson as National Affairs Editor from 1970 to 1981. And High Time fans are familiar with the contributions his Global Affairs correspondent since 1977. Um, Thompson, wait, let me talk. Thompson's first work in inside look at America's most notorious motorcycle gang title, Hell Angel. It was followed by the popular Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas in 1972. His praised account of a district attorney's convention in Sin City. Thereafter, it came Fair and Loathing on the campaign trail in 1973, The Great Shark Hunt in 1977, and Kona Stories in 1981. Many who are not familiar with Thompson's writings will remember him as the inspiration in Bill Murray's movie, Where the Buffalo Roam, and has the model for Uncle Duke and Jerry Trudeau's Dewsbury comic strip. Right now, I'd like to introduce Hunter S. Thompson. You all left too. I was hoping you heard. Uh, but I guess not really. Jesus. Are the lights on here for any reason? Uh, is anyone filming? <laughs> well, I, I figure if I move this late, I don't have any complaint right now. And I do wonder why these mics are over here. But it makes me feel like Billy Graham. <laughs> oh, here we go. Any extension here? I don't know. Is it? All right, are you on here? Boom, no. Which one's mine? The thick of 11? This is what you need right now. Right, how about a big point? No? For both of us? For both of us? Yeah, we can talk about it. Like this?
Oh, oh. Boy, it's hard to, uh, to leave the mountains and come down here to the flat. Whoop! I didn't think I was a sound man here. I, uh, I, I really uh, hope we've got this thing fixed. These are going? These are, I don't know what these are. That's All right, uh, give the, the clear fact that we've uh, gone sideways here for a moment. Maybe uh, we just start off with somebody, uh, whoever's the most pissed off and, uh, and articulate right here. Uh, well, we'll have, a, we'll have a little, you know, like a piece before I start my long speech. So, uh, whoever is the angriest and the ugliest and the meanest, let's get it right fucking on. That's what I heard. <laughs> you, all right. Where's your microphone, you goddamn warrior? You never got any voice. What do you, what do you speak up? Hey, man, I'll get you this. What? like sending a, you know, a pretty young girl to Los Angeles to uh, pursue an acting career. Uh, yeah, as I, and I, as I hope I explained, I think I did, I went there to do it one time and to uh, not have the, the uh, albatross on my neck, head, shoulders, whatever, wherever an albatross sits. Uh, of having to come back. And if more people did that, we'd have a lot better political coverage. Uh, the trouble is, you go to Washington, it's a very, uh, I guess, beguiling scene for some people. It's a horrible place, man. It's a rottenest goddamn town. Yeah, I think St. Louis is bad. What do you say? Wait a minute. Now. Calm down. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm fighting this song. Hang on, hang on. Give me some tape. Right? Tape. Come on. 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 Come Put it up in the right position. All right. All right. Okay. Right. Very good. Well, my people was down uh, the tube. I don't know if I'd say this, but uh, I miss Nixon. <laughs> yeah. no, Nixon had a, uh, a complexity of evil about him. Uh, a really a genuine and, and profound uh, character of fault and flaw that Reagan doesn't have because Reagan is uh, just simply uh, an actor. Uh, Nixon was not an actor. Nixon was an evil, goddamn cheap, horrible person. <laughs> Now, when, when they put Reagan up to be president, they said, okay, uh, Dutch, you get on up there, you know. We got you covered. And he had Bieber, and he had uh, Baker, and he had uh, Not Singer, and he had uh, Meese. Oh, ho, ho, we'll hear more from that moment. <laughs> Before I go, I'm going to see Meese in a goddamn cage being carried down Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> or me, or me. One of us, I'll meet you. Oh, what's the chances you take, you know? 
But uh, they abandoned him in midstream. Here is Bore Dutch up there. All he ever did was do sports broadcast on the radio and sell uh, light bulbs for GE <laughs> and uh, abolish all the uh, uh, inpatient care for uh, the mentally defective in California <laughs> and uh, quadruple the uh, budget in California and blow up totally sky high. But they liked him, you know. He was a bad actor, but uh, at the time, it was not college he had politics. He was, a, he was a cutting edge of his generation. You know. Uh, well, there were people like George Murphy got into it. No, actors were not getting into politics. And you wait. Jack Nicholson told me the other day he's running for president. How many would vote for Jack if he ran for president? I believe that. I believe that. I'm not sure what I would do. He's an old friend, but I'm not sure I'd vote for him. <laughs> but, uh... We like Carter, too! Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> Talk about albatross! Holy Jesus! <laughs> oh, come on. I should have brought the, uh, the tapes I have of Carter in his living room in 1974. Talking, hey, be quiet now. I'm out here. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to come to you someday. You may be it. <laughs> Jimmy Carter... Uh, two years before he ran, speaking in his living room about what he was going to do, was as eloquent and as convincing and as uh, perfect uh, a living model of a Jeffersonian agrarian striver, an honest man. And I can be taken in sometimes. You know, I, I'm not completely uh, <laughs> all right. I bought it. I bought it. But so would you, man, if you read, if you listen to the tapes, and I had about eight hours of them. And Jimmy Carter's law day speech, when I went down to that law school, nothing compares to it in literature, except maybe, and I, you know, I said literature, accidentally. Uh, no, Douglas MacArthur's speech to Congress in 53, hey, but if you want to hear something, you want to really hear the, the nuts rattle in the brains, listen to MacArthur's long gray line of speech. It's final speech. No, I, uh, old voters never died, it was 53. He gave uh, his last speech with the graduating class of West Point. I was 61. It's called the Long Gray Line. Hey, you would cry, you would crawl from here to St. Louis. Really, it would make you, uh, just like Carter did to me. It was true, though. It was true. What do you do when somebody, somebody tells you a true thing? You know, if you're sitting there and a guy named Lincoln says, hey, I got something to read here, man. I, I, can you give me an opinion on the first draft? I don't know. I went to Gettysburg tomorrow. <laughs> I don't have much time, I only have about 200 words. And you read through that, and what do you say? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll vote for you, you know. Uh, I'll carry your bags. I will carry your bags. So I carried Jimmy's bags for a while, yeah. But I will tell you that, uh, and I can't explain why Carter failed utterly as a president. I could have been taking a long time. <laughs> but it was not because he, he was not honest, it was because he wanted. He didn't want to, uh, to be. He wanted to be a combination of Lincoln, Jefferson, Kennedy, and God. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, he was a treacherous, uh, dumb redneck. You know, it, it worked out that way. <laughs> and, uh, well, after that, I'm, I'm staying. You know what? Am I, am I supposed to apologize for it? God damn it. I, well, I live around all the time with these terrible scars. But, that's what you do in politics, you know, you have to take your chances, and they're not too many of them, they're really good. Like, who are you, who do you have? You. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I've agreed here that I talk for more than 90 seconds at once, I should be... Yeah. Right? Right. Okay, so I just said two ladies, so... Uh, no, no, I'm, who do you have right now? We're into another shoot. Okay, who, who do you uh, like? Who do you like for this? Uh, 88. Hey, wait, wait. Mama. One at a time, I'll get you all. First. Who? I can't hear you. Denmark. Gephardt. Gephardt. Hmm, okay. Hey, that's fair. Who's a Kennedy? Ted Kennedy? Well, let's just try a few. How about you? Who would you vote for? Who do you like in the presidential? Mario Como, Pat Robertson. No, what do you say? 
What are you saying? Jerry Garcia. Jerry Garcia. Well, Jerry or good? Jerry! Well, Mercy would be the best person, but he'll never win, right? This one's great. Can I drink a little bit? Let's try a. Uh, Back in the back, you have a uh, blue shirt on with a, uh, your, your hands crossed like this. And black hair, what, what do you like? Standing up, come on. I'm here, you can do it. No, I'll get, call on somebody. Let's just get a, get a few names here. Who, who likes Step on it? One? You're a man, that's a bad position to be in. Nixon. Nixon, <laughs> all right. Bruce Babbitt. Babbitt. Yeah. That's Babbitt. One Babbitt. One uh, Gebhardt. Bob Dole. One Nixon. Dole. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy must be a hurt. <laughs> Gary Hart. Okay. Como. All right. Now, all right, let's just run a, a quick run here. Uh, Abbott Babbitt. We're going to vote to, uh, tonight. Babbitt. <laughs> Uh, nobody's going to be held to this. I just want to be curious. How about uh, Cuomo? Okay. How about, about Gary Horan? How about Gary Horan? Who's the head? Babbitt? Yeah. Nobody. Jack Kemp? No. Ooh, shit. That was a bad one. What the hell? <laughs> who would call us that? He's a nice boy. He's an athlete. Yeah, I like Gary. He's an old friend. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's all right. Would he be a good president? Yeah, he would be. The presidents are dull people, man. You have to put somebody in charge of the store. You don't want to have the president be your best friend. You don't want to drink with the president. You want to go to the president's house and get crazy. You want the president to take care of business. And that's not what's happened recently, is it? Now, what would happen if, if, if I sent you and uh, 268 of your Marine friends to uh, Beirut? And you got blown off the goddamn face of the earth, and it, you learn later, your, your, your parents learn later, that I was selling arms to the Iranians who blew you up <laughs> as a policy. Well, I don't, yeah, I, I, I despise Republicans in general because of their. Uh, <laughs> uh, Personally, they're not bad, but I, uh, I'm offended by the, the, the decency and the honesty of the. That trickle down ethic. <laughs> and here you got Kemp. Now, what is trickle down so far? What, 18 million homeless and hungry and uh, the, the largest uh, national de deficit in, in the history of man? And they want more. Do you know what a goddamn stallion helicopter costs? You give a piece of paper you're in, it cost, it cost $24 million a piece. And they have money of them. Now, the other night I got a legal bed and I thought, hey, that's a lot of money, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, all of Congress was locked up trying to debating over where to give the contras forty got a million more. Now all of that is less than two stallion helicopters, these new ones, and they all blew up. They came flying. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Bradley fighting vehicle. Yeah. And yeah. The M1 tank, B1 bomber, and the and the and the they're talking about an albatross boy. You people are gonna be you said what? I think called Star Wars. What is that, a $300 million or $300 billion, trillion dollar? Hey, they, they, they bitch about Gary, Jerry Garcia for eating acid. Yeah. Never in his wildest and craziest dreams did Jerry ever think about it. <laughs> you know, stealing, stealing for the public. You know, uh, there's a difference. If you're going to steal that much money to the taxpayer, it, it'll be about 30% of every dollar, every tax dollar. And to, the finance of them that nobody in this room would even go near if it appeared on the street. If you saw one of them hissing and bouncing out there, you'd never go near it. <laughs> Have you seen the, uh, you know, the uh, mock up sport? These weird things like, who here would vote for the Star Wars uh, project? Come on, come on. Go, let me intimidate you here. One, all right, that's fair. <laughs> Just one? Well, you know, the, the Reagan uh, thing, the, the nuclear shield, the monster thing. Nobody? Well, I want to make that, where's that thing? I really was hoping for a more uh, aggressive audience on that. <laughs> but then, uh, so was Reagan. Yeah. Uh, 
Where do you work? <laughs> well, wherever you work, you'll probably soon be dripped out of your uh, off the hall somewhere. Uh, at your, at your first coffee break and forced to go into a cubicle and piss in a little jar. <laughs> and well, uh, I, don't, I, I can't even see you. I don't know who you are, and I wish you good luck. <laughs> what do you do? If you smoke a joint or ate some herbal tea or uh, but, uh, did some nutmeg for some crazy reason in the past 30 days, or if the guy who's giving the test did. Yeah. You're likely to have your entire career destroyed. Uh, you could be pegged as a heroin addict uh, for reasons you might, you may, maybe you are. But, <laughs> But people have been hit that way, and they don't know why, and it's a bad feeling, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a job. <laughs> but more and more people are being hit with these things, and then when, when you're into a 20- or 30-year career program, it really uh, derails you to be known as a... <laughs> well, I... Yeah, uh, it's, a, it, it's funny to me, in a way. I don't have jobs, you know. I, uh, I learned that a long time ago. I stay away from those people. <laughs> but, boy, if I did, I'd be in trouble, wouldn't I? And, you know, it's a, it's a McCarthy swing. We're back into a very bad era. And I'm afraid you people are going to have to uh, live with it. I guess I will, too. I never expected to, damn it. Yeah, and to have outlived Neil Cassidy is a real shock to me. And, uh, that's why I'm here. Somebody asked, what are you doing here? I'm trying to explain how I've outlived uh, Neil Cassidy, I guess. No, I, I'm, I'm looking for George Kimball. Anybody here know George? All right. I'm trying to explain to these uh, young bloods here uh, that Lawrence used to be a really serious town where you didn't want to come in here except on a motorcycle. You know, uh, and, and that you know, had to come in on at least a 74. Uh, Lawrence used to uh, rumble. No, it doesn't. I don't know. I'm not saying it doesn't know. I'm just saying that I get the feeling it's not quite the same. Yeah. Well, George ran for sheriff here. Pardon me, you got to speak up now. Black, did you ever get a black shadow? No, man, I didn't. I rode that bugger about three times. It's the worst riding bike you'll ever find in your life. It really is. It's a, no wonder they've died out. They will not handle. You cannot turn the damn thing. You get that, that huge, it's like a, uh, like a tractor. You're like, boom. Oh, mine? The lady? Yeah. It was then a uh, 66 yeah. Lightning. The fastest bike ever tested by Hot Rod Magazine. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was, man. It was fast as hell. That's why I got it. But it, uh, it was faster than the Angels bike. Well, boy. Yeah, I, I paid for that. I'd do it again, man. That was a beautiful bike. Third gear in that bike was like, well, never mind, but it was a fit. Me, I, I, I'm trying to hear you. What did they do in San Francisco to get your riding regularly again? What did they, uh... Why are you the that? media critic for the examiner? Take up your leg! Oh, you want me to answer that? Hey, hey, hey! Read the question. Read the question. Hey, hey, hey! Take up your leg! Take up your leg! Wait! Hey. Hang on, one at a time, please. Why am I doing this? Just repeat the question so they can hear it. Okay, I can't hear it myself. <laughs> what? Wait, why? Oh, wait, uh, man, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. No way leaving here. Whew, I need some ice. Well, let's see. Why am I... Well, we're that media critic, but I have as far as I'm at. But now I was going to be syndicated. Oh, you think it's bad so far. Uh, no, uh, Willie Hurst uh, came to me and said, "Hey, man, uh, I want to, uh, I want to revive his paper. You know, journalism is dead in this country." Well, I'm gonna tell you. And I said, "You're right." He said, "Let's have a little fun. We got a lot of money here. My name is Hurst. We got a, uh, 
we had a, a joint publishing agreement with Chronicle, we cannot lose. You know, I mean, you want to sell a Chevrolet in the Chronicle, which has a new, like, three to one circulation edge over the Examiner, which used to be the main paper on the coast. Yeah, the new uh, logo, and the old logo is the monarch of the dailies. Well, it's fun to write for a good newspaper. It's fun to have a lot of, you know, it, I like that energy that, that craves uh, the charge and, and, and reaction you can get in a, uh, in a newsroom. It's one of the quickest reactions you, know, you can find that anywhere in a, uh, any kind of job you're going to get. You very seldom get it, but Willie said, hot damn, we're gonna, uh, we can't lose. Let's have a good newspaper. And I said, hey, all right. What do I have to do? He said, write a column. So that's why I uh, did that. And uh, I don't know how I got into it. It's like drugs. You know, uh, so it was like, oh, for me, a, you know, I got drunk, I didn't know, do well, a uh, column a week. I figured, what the hell, I'll try it once or twice. <laughs> well, I, I got hooked on it. I don't know. I, I just did number 78. And uh, it's a weird experience. It comes out of some part of my mind that I don't tap very often, like this sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I believe you should try it, whatever you can, and just try and hope for some fun. So, uh, but it would be fun to work for a good paper. I would like to have them. That's what I've been feeding on them for. If you want a good paper, we, you know, I don't, you know, circulation, what the hell, I can't do anything about that. Uh, San Francisco only has about 300,000 people to read. The rest of them are, are blind from AIDS and uh, welfare cases and foreigners. I don't know. But you cannot make a, uh, a circulation base out of a paper in San Francisco. But what you can make is a big flash on it. And you can cover politics. And let me tell you, national politics in the next uh, six months is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. You're going to see them bleeding. They will hang for the telephone bowl. And... Yeah, it's not a threat, it's not a threat, there's no vengeance in this. It's an observation. And I, uh, you know, I, would, I would bet on it. I would back in the dark rooms and make odds, like Mies, you know, uh, eight to one. Uh, I, I thought about that. How about Regan? Regan is gone. Well, the horror of it is they're, 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 they made all this stuff and they're trying to blame it all on that, that crazy bastard Oliver North. Now, he is nuts, and he did a good job, really, for, being, for a crazy man. Uh, but they're going to try to tell you it stops there. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just try for a second. Who, would anybody want to guess as to where it's going to stop? Where, where, will, where will the buck stop on this uh, Iran Contra thing? Janet Jackson! <laughs> Wait, come on, come on, speak up. Did I, did I make myself clear? Like, who is responsible for this, uh, Jackson! Hey, they have brainwashed you real badly, haven't they? We are. Yeah, it's my fault. Well, it's not your fault. It's George Bush's fault, goddammit. And, yeah, what a, what, what a grim situation where you find, uh, a person like you saying it's my fault. You know, our fault. Well, it's not your fault. It's, uh, they told you that, haven't they? Yeah, it's your fault because you're not rich. You're both of you have AIDS, herpes, you know, you smoke marijuana. You're guilty, right? What are you going to do for fun, for God's sake? <laughs> you believe the bed is rough. You know, they got you for one, and now you're doomed. Well, you got a cheap little Jap camera. It's the most fun you can have. Christ. You can steal those. I'm sorry, I'm getting out of control. I'll get down. But you know, it angers me that George Bush is sliding off the hook on this uh, uh, Iran Contra. At the local phrase, I, I do it deliberately because nobody knows how to phrase it. Watergate was a very easy thing to say. But in, in Congress, Contragate, it implies, that's Pat Buchanan's phrase, it, it implies it was just a, a patriotic bungling, you know, that a bunch of nice guys wanted to help these poor countries in uh, Nicaragua. Well, boy, have you ever been to a really bad Wall Street drunk party and seen some bad people? Uh, who is that? Uh, well, no, the, uh, uh, Palero, the guy just quit, and, uh, well, both of them just quit, and he, between them, uh, between, somewhere between a Swiss bank account and Lake Resources, 
And Adolfo Calero, they lost $17.5 million. Because they can't explain it. And uh, the last person known to have seen it is Oliver North. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, too, you have to put down on paper and put 17, 0, 0, 0, 0, comma, 0, 0, 0. But that's half the cost of a uh, F-111. And, yeah, and two-thirds of a, uh, an Australian helicopter. Thirty seconds. Watch me. I only have two miles. Okay. He's dead. I'm sorry, but they killed him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I would be, I'd be the last person to urge discipline on you, but... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's easier for us to talk if one of me, how about you? That's Ralph McEvitt from Hawaii. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ralph is one of uh, the really good people. And also one of the worst and most uh, onerous people, and friends you can have. But good people don't call my along too often. I've been lucky to meet a few of them. And uh, Oscar, you know, Alonzo was one, and Ralph was another. Ralph is maybe the best artist, and if not that, the best person I know. He's a, uh, he's a killer. And uh, but he gets on my nerves, and uh, I, I've done things like put bombs in his bedroom and frighten his daughter and uh, go to his ca in a castle. It was a huge castle over there in uh, England, in Kent. But uh, you want to learn to recognize the good people. They don't come along with that, that's very often. And, uh, yeah, Ralph's one. There are very few signs. Like Ken Kesey is uh, one of them. And, uh, all right, yeah, I told you, 90 seconds, man. You hit me. Okay. Yeah. And Jerry Garcia, too, by the way. Now we get mushy. Sammy Prager. <laughs> Sammy Prager. What about Sammy Prager? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I need shit, right? <laughs> right. You should be. They can't hear these. Uh, they can't hear the questions. Yeah, I'll get a mic deck. Well, no, I mean, as long as you. I, you pick them up. What? What? Behind you. Yes. Catch. <laughs> Decently lives. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere on that dark edge of the marsh and the dump, you know, as Faulkner said, when the uh, the last whimpering human voice it says its last thing, some freak like this will throw a beer down to me. <laughs> and we, will, we will know that uh, there is a human. Okay. I'm only going to let you talk when you've done t good twice. Oh, Go ahead. Super Bowl 21! Given the fact that you ran from all this harassment, uh, how does it make you feel? Frustrated and excited that you're going to pass it around here and they don't know who George Kimball was. Give him a delay! Well, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. I asked who, people, who George Kimball was, and people either lied or. Uh, uh, you, hey, he was a terrible goddamn Kenneth. He had one eye, he was a drunken son. I really, uh. But wait, wait, don't, didn't, let's try again. Does anybody here know who George Kimball was? Yeah. All right. Hey, you better go and get some more friends. You were smoking some weird weed or something. You get paranoid. Yeah. You're right, but uh, you're not as alone as you thought. What's right. your favorite brand of beer, Hunter? What's beer, beer, beer. I want to drink the, uh, the Molson Golden, which is a nice Canadian beer. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, this is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bertles and Ellaby or something like that? Uh, Bertles and James? Bertles and James, yeah. I've gotten into moderation in my uh, old age. Bertles, you don't want any of this, do you? What? What about the night manager? Are you looking for a job? Well, <laughs> pretty damn soon, I guess. They're suing me now. Well, I've been it off for about five years, you know, really. Uh, 
I am a hillbilly, and I don't have any sense of, uh, of you know, getting profit together and counting money and going down to the vaults at night and seeing how many coins I have. All I want really <coughs> is to work for expenses, but if you tell them that, I'll tell you. But the night manager, I've had enough fun with it. Wait a minute now. You want to know about the night manager? What do we have here? I bet we have some boys that can tell you some things about that. Now, if I am not mistaken, let me look around this room and see how many red eyes I see like this one over here. <laughs> Who's filming here? here? Hold your hands up. Where is Artie Mitchell? Artie, speak up. I'm going to find your ass. <laughs> what we have with us now, all right, what we're going to see is one of the great scurrying acts like uh, Poindexter and North. Uh, for the, uh, the corners, McFarland, you know, uh, eating Valium. We can all eat that many of Valium. <laughs> so what we have here, somewhere in our midst, we have the Mitchell brothers, the famous Mitchell brothers. Where? I see one of them over here. <laughs> uh, he's working though, that's Jim. But hey, I want to I will let you know now that I am the night manager of the O'Farrell Theater. And that uh, I got the job by accident. And I, uh, I've, done it, I've been a good night manager. They will tell you that. What? Pardon me? Future in laws? <laughs> what do you know about that? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm trying to answer a question. Uh, it just happens to be that my uh, uh, employers, as it were, my partners in this uh, hideous exercise, are with us tonight. Now, if you want to know what uh, pornography is like in this world, if you want to know what public sex, actually, uh, we run, I'll put it that way, the Carnegie Hall of Public Sex in America. And uh, if there's a better place in this town, or even many like it, I'd like to see it. Because by some weird accident, I slid into the, uh, the sort of uh, the art artistic side of the sex business. And, uh, well, you left. It happened to you. <laughs> I went in there. These degenerate swine were uh, about ready to be locked up. And I went over to, somebody said, well, these guys, they're not bad guys, really. Uh, they're going to be put in jail for 60 years for nothing. I went over there and had a curiosity. And it was a pathetic sight. They were completely bewildered. They were, in fact. They were, they were people, like, there were bonfires outside the, uh, the O'Farrell is sort of in downtown San Francisco. They were bewildered. There were hate, people full of hate, mobs chanting, uh, you know, torches. People were being killed outside in the corners. And there was no reason for it at all, as I could see. And slowly, slowly, this is what journalism will do to you, gonzo journalism. I became, first I became, I went over to cover it. Then slowly I, uh, you know, I used a typewriter. And then I had a few drinks, you know, and, uh, and I think I filled in for the, uh, the real night manager one night. And all of a sudden, I figured I had, I had a job. You know, it's like for a rabbit in the uh, briar patch, I guess. But uh, that, no point in my talking about it. What should we do? Here? Should we? Get, I want. I want to bring, uh, bring them out. <laughs> one of these gentlemen out here. Just introduce you. Now, who's working back there? One of you boys want to come out here and speak to me, or is the these people? Yes, you will. Yeah. This is a. They're very shy. Like they're good people, and uh, they're in, they got me into this terrible thing. Artie, you go there? Come on. Come on, I'll go down. All right, here comes Jim Mitchell now, the cameraman. This is Jim Mitchell, the most famous photographer. This is Artie Mitchell. Give me a record, brother. They not help us, they are friends of mine. But, uh, hey, what are you doing? You know, uh, where are you going late at night? I go to my office. Yeah, I go to my office in the, uh, in the theater. And uh, peacefully, uh, brood, you know, watch the street. It'd be, it's surprising how fast you get used to being around naked women all the time. <laughs> it really takes about 95 hours. And then, uh, really, it, you can all be naked, and you know, it doesn't, you know, it's, uh, it gets past you. Pardon me, I'm talking too much. What? They all look alike, no? No? It's a, uh, it's a wild variety of, uh, a girl. Wow, I looks. Yeah. More, well, maybe, about the same as here, maybe, but, about the same as here, perhaps, but, 
Well, I'm a little uh, heavier edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. You think, uh, Beers, 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 really. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Hey, hey, I appreciate the offer. But, <laughs> what is going to ether? Do you have any industrial ether? <laughs> well, the hospital ether does not work well. It's too pure. <laughs> hey Hunter! <laughs> you go ahead now and get whatever you can and come, you know, uh, if you get some industrial ether, man, I will, uh, I'll give you an opinion on it. All you need about is two opinions and you'll have a good, you know, you'll wander around for a while. It doesn't hurt you too much. Okay, what's that man's name?
Yeah, I've been through these wars. I, I, uh, yeah, he's mine too. But though, that's the whole point. That, who'd you vote for last time? Uh, I voted for Walter and Jerry. Okay. Well, that's why you got fucking run with this goddamn piece of <laughs> Yeah, the, the politics is no longer a frivolous business when we elect a uh, dingbat from uh, General Electric who, now, I, I, I admired Reagan's uh, apparent skill, you know, at being a uh, uh, kind of a Disneyland president. <laughs> well, which is, that's not all bad, you know. Uh, but if, if Disneyland went crazy and people were being electrocuted and uh, all the, the rides failed and, then, you know, uh, it, it turned out salmonella and the Cokes, <laughs> then Uncle Walt would not be so fun, would he? Well, that's what happened to Ronald. And he ran this train for, but he didn't run it, he didn't run it. And he didn't, he thought he'd have to. He was an actor. And he said, hey, this is good. I recall going to, from driving to, from San Francisco to, uh, I guess Denver somewhere around the west, somewhere around Reno in uh, 66. And I just voted for, uh, I don't know, uh, Charles Manson or something for governor. <laughs> On the theory that I would not vote for Pat Brown, the de then Democratic governor, and uh, that they deserve. Maybe I didn't even vote for Reagan. I don't think so. But I, I do my vote away. On the grounds that the, the people of the state would be punished for their ignorance. You know, they'd, uh, ho, ho, they deserve this man. Well, no, what, this is what, uh, 20 years later, and he's president. That was wrong. Now, throwing your vote away like that in a democracy, is I've, I've done it, and it's a, it's a luxury, and it's an indulgence, but if you want to have any control about what's going on, you really got to think about that. And I have. Yeah. And, yeah, it's been an agonizing decision, and particularly to me, for, for Hubert Humphrey. Still, man, I'd rather walk naked from here to uh, Joliet or something. They'd vote for Hubert Humphrey, but... Uh, <laughs> I did. Yeah! I didn't dislike you, Humphrey. I, I felt bad about writing that he should be castrated because his genes should not be passed on to uh, other generations. I wrote that in the middle of a little campaign, and, and uh, people said it was bad, and I thought, well, you know, so what? I'm only here once. But then somebody said, well, you know, he has a, uh, a mentally retarded grandson, and. Uh, that was a very cruel thing. I didn't mean it that way. I was right, of course. <laughs> and, uh... I don't know. I, I don't know how old I have to get before I get used to really dishonest politicians. But, boy, we, uh, we were privileged to have in the same generation Hubert Humphrey and Richard Nixon. <laughs> oh, man. That's really like having, uh, I don't know, uh, William Jennings Bryan and, uh... Warren Harding or something in the same generation. A, a, a celebration of extreme gibberish. High, high gibberish. Which, which uh, kind of elicits a response. You, know, you're gonna, you, you want to play up to something like that. What do you think of a woman president? A woman president. Well, Geraldine Perro ran for vice president, did you not? Angela Davis. Yeah, I just asked you now. That was, uh, what about her? Did you vote for her? What do you think of a woman president? Who, who, who? Who, who? Who, who? Who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you guys want for um, woman president? Man or white? <laughs> yeah. Albert E. Newman. Well, you people have been called a generation of swine. And, uh, for, for me to say that, but, uh, you might, as they say, uh, get what you deserve in politics. And, uh, well, yeah, you could have a, a hideous fate of watching uh, that America on ABC uh, all night long. <laughs> or you might, I'm not sure what, which of you would prefer to be uh, a part of the America cast or a part of that the day after, you know, but, <laughs> I prefer the day after, frankly. It, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
The bullets were the worst case. No. I did, I did pretty well, my guy, my thoughts down on that one. In conclusion. Yeah. I don't like to get involved with you know, people I know like that very often. It was a bitch. It was wild. They really got uh, right straight into it on that one. You don't see it that, that way very often. No, no, no. I, I really, uh, I stopped reading the Donnie scripts a long time ago. I know that, uh, that treacherous little fart, but, uh, you know, I don't read it. Uh, it far side. I read that occasionally, but no, I don't, I don't read coming scripts. I see those things because people point, point to them and say, oh, God, it's you again. <laughs> but, uh, hey, for 10 years of that stuff, you really have to develop a, bl a blind spot. When you grow up! <laughs> <laughs> grow up, eh? No, no. Well, I don't know. I, didn't, I never did have any ambitions, you know. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to you know, lay back and drink whiskey in a warm place. <laughs> I never wanted to be a cowboy. I never wanted to be a fireman. I never wanted to be a cop. President or a lawyer. That's the one thing I, I knew that was one thing I didn't want to be, and I was a goddamn lawyer. Uh, any lawyers here? Any lawyers? Hot dog. Yeah, very good. I, I figured that. Uh, who else? Your lawyer? Okay. I just. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to you over there, the lawyer. <laughs> the Del Castro? Well, people ask me that <laughs> now and then. I've always said that, you know, that, uh, that weird time of turmoil that uh, you can characterize any decade you want. I only had three heroes in that time. And, uh,. It still, it's always been true, it still is. One is uh, Muhammad Ali, one is Bob Dylan, and one is uh, Fidel Castro. Yay! Yay! I'm sorry, but I'll go to the grave with that kind of thing. If you, if you, you, know, you have to uh, be known by your friends, your enemies, those are mine. It's all your social life political. Who are yours, That's, uh, what? It's all your social life political. Political, no. Boy, that dead silence. Like, everybody hates Dylan, uh, Ali, and uh, Castro? No, no, no. Castro. Oh. The, the what? Hey, you're watching it right now. you March 25th? April 20th. No, I haven't. Wait, I did, that, uh, I'm, I'm not at all surprised to say that. Are you? Anything, that, anything that, that goes against, anything that, uh, that is valid like that, and that energy, is a big deal. It's about time somebody got their ass, off their ass here and did something about these things. Why are we in Nicaragua? Well, why is Ed Meese the Attorney General? <laughs> uh, it's a dumbness that has resisted for, uh, God damn, man, why are we in Nicaragua? That's a, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that you really don't want to have to be sucked into answering. <laughs> what does it all mean, Alfie? But, uh, <laughs> we are in Nicaragua because of the, uh, wow, let me draw this one. Uh, the warp in the system that we have uh, developed here in this country, uh, they've taken us from uh, sort of like Thomas Jefferson to Jimmy Hoffa to uh, Ed Meese now. <laughs> We're in Nicaragua because uh, we stand for a uh, uh, capitalist, colonialist, I'm not talking about communist here, but uh, well, if I do, so what? I'll be a communist. But uh, that's the answer. That's, that has been our system in this uh, hemisphere and all over the world for, uh, for all of our time, which is only about 200 years. It's an easy 
thing. It's uh, like the rich people, you know, why, why don't we just uh, have some sharecroppers out here? Why don't we hire some uh, Filipino women to come over and uh, we'll marry them and call them, you know, wives and uh, we just have a bunch of maids. We have, unfortunately, not uh, gone around the world showing people that we believe in the, the same thing we, we talk about. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you went around and got, that took votes in the uh, in countries where, where even dumb people are uh, are serious about politics, <laughs> I, I don't mean dumb, maybe ignorant. You know, people, but people who really believe that, that, that if you say that every man should have a vote, there is no uh, uh, document or no idea in the history of man that is more popular or more honest or uh, right straight in. Hey, who? What's this? No, never mind. Uh, you know, our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution is about as, uh, as decent a document as you can get. Yeah, it's, it's recognized. All, the only quarrel that people have with it is we don't follow it. And, well, Thomas Jefferson died bitter, vicious, broke, hitting the press, and uh, all the politicians he'd uh, broke. Was it John Adams that said John Adams died and said, it was, uh, I can die now peacefully, Jefferson is dead? That was a, uh, that was a pretty fast lane to be in. Madison and Jefferson, uh, the boys who wrote the Declaration, that was a fast time. Well, wait a minute. Don't you have professors here? <laughs> <laughs> the definition of democracy. <laughs> What now? Where'd you get your hat? Hat. Where'd you get it? I got this hat from the. Uh, yeah! It's called, it says, uh, the San Francisco Marina Assistant Harbor Master. I got it from the Assistant Harbor Master. We're telling him he wanted me to have his name in print. And I said, well, all right, give me the hat. <laughs> and uh, the next. Uh, the next day I put his name in print as burning bodies at his shed down on, uh, <laughs> on Scott Street. And he was happy, happy. I have never been able to say things about, I've had things about people in print to have a bitch. It's incredible. People want to be in print. How about David Letterman? How about Lester Dykes? Wait a minute, Letterman? Yeah. It doesn't say about Letterman. He really yeah. is a... He's <laughs> like a dim white bulb. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> no, he's okay, but it's... I don't want to grow with it. I have no grow with it. Read that. Are you here for the money? Why are you here? Well, you like I just want to come out here and talk to you guys. What the hell? What is huh? reality? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was kind of puzzled as to what the uh, college generation was thinking. And uh, yeah, this guy back behind me, this gentleman, asked, what is reality? Well, I was thinking about that myself all the way across uh, the plains. Uh, you know. <laughs> So now why'd you come to KU if people don't think? Well, who? The guy up there. We have to watch this crowd back here. They don't really deserve it. Ladies! The condoms be advertised on TV. The condoms be advertised on TV. Pretty good? Do you really huh? need it? Pass your cigarette, dude. Yeah. <laughs> What's the true meaning of life? <laughs> 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 you need to talk to you guys have been on? My uh, car has been ticketed outside. <laughs> PJ? Oh, he's good. No, he's all right. He's good. Bill Kreider? Hey, Kreider is, uh, Kreider is another uh, first-ranked people. The same one you guys talking about over here? April 25th? Are you talking about the same thing? Did you hear this guy over here? 
Tell him about it. This guy's asking about the beast market. No, hell, but I, uh, I thought you made you talk to this guy with your own nose. It figures, huh? Fuck, I'm just trying to put it together with you, but, uh, for you, uh, cop. We'll try you again, you've been pretty good. If, if the election were tomorrow. Madonna. Madonna. You live here? Yeah? Boy, it must be lonely. Uh, Who I endorse? I, it probably is not wise to me, right? You can see that for me to say that in public. Hey, it's a long damn time until uh, the election, and I am a journalist, and uh, it probably isn't wise. I mean, I want you to understand this. It's not wise for me to say right now who I would endorse if I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, I can't hear you. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those tragedies, you know, generational tragedies. We tried. We did okay for a while. You know, you find a place like that where you can hang out for 10 years and get paid for it and go mad. They're bound to get you. They will get you. But if you get 10 years, it's not so bad. Technology and how long have you been a solar-powered sex machine? <laughs> I don't know. Really, I, uh, that's way too complicated for me. What do you think of the new drugs? What new drugs? What do you have? <laughs> I've seen new drugs for a while. Designer drugs. Well, designer drugs are. It's like designer clothes, you know, they wander all over the place and there's no uh, standard. Sometimes they're pretty good, and sometimes they'll put you into a hideous glitch on the floor where you grip your knees and hang there for about eight hours. <laughs> well, no, there's no guarantee that comes with designer drugs, you know, but like, if you had them, I would, you'd say to me, boy, I got some good stuff here. I'd have to look at you and think, hmm. Uh, you just, uh, you know, uh, just what do uh, we have here? I'd probably try it if I trusted you, but even trusting people is not enough when you're doing designer drugs. Because dope fiends are uh, weird, you know, they'll push it a little far. And designer drugs are sort of what people want to make them. I'd much prefer some serious acid. Yeah! <laughs> well, with well, acid, you, you know what you're getting, right? It's, uh, what about adrenochrome? Adrenochrome. <laughs> what do you think of this condom? Where is Jim Morrison? How about Pam? You want, uh, you want Artie Mitchell to give you a lecture on safe sex? That's the hottest subject in the country right now. Art. Hey, you here? Come on, man. Art tried to tell me I was supposed to wear condoms and then put this little greasy stuff all over me. Uh, he's on safe sex. And maybe it's true, you know, but uh, it must be horrible to think that uh, you get AIDS every time you, uh, your mind wanders a bit, and uh, <laughs> I, I've never been into that, you know, herpes has got it up, but that was a problem, but AIDS is, uh, and they really have got us on the run. You're over here, you're saying, it's my fault, I'm guilty, boy. They have won, haven't they? Yeah, when you say, it's my fault. For being, a, uh, it wasn't your fault. You know, you didn't do anything about AIDS, did you? You didn't uh, elect Reagan. You didn't shoot. Uh, you didn't shoot Kennedy. You didn't do any of these things. And to take the guilt for it, I think, is really maybe in some really reaching sense of uh, guilt beyond the Catholic, beyond Jesuit. <laughs> but boy, I, I don't think I would. We don't have time for that in our lives. I don't think. I don't think you do either. I mean, certainly not me. To be guilty for the sins of, a, of all these dingbats and these shitheads and these thieves and these goddamn killers and murderers. Uh, no, we're not guilty for that unless you've been out doing that yourself. 
But the, the, what we have now is a generation that feels guilty for that, I think. Uh, what do you think of the whole street smoking in public places? <laughs> yeah, it's all around. I'm opposed. Oh, hey, I don't go in there anymore. I, uh, I eat outside of town on the outskirts. I never went in there anyway. I hope not, boy. I had that weakness that I would not want to indulge. <laughs> you have to associate with uh, some of the worst people. Hey, sir. Water. Right there. What did you think of the movie Where the Buffalo Road? Uh, I said it ain't shut before, and I, I could uh, I could tone that down if you want, or up. Which, which way you want to go? <laughs> it was silly, you know. But the best thing you can say about that is that Murray is still a good friend. He was before, he still is. So uh, we survived that. But it was a horrible thing that a friend did to me. <laughs> These things happen. We are professionals. You know? <laughs> Hunter! Do you hate Jim Myers? I can't see you or hear you. I hear you, but where? Jim Myers. Where? We page Jim Myers. Uh, it's a quest to page Jim Myers. Where you wanted to go? To report to what? Come on, the white paging telephone, right? Snack bar. There's no snack bar. <laughs> I, I, Jim Myers, okay. You just wander around loosely now, by the way, where to go? <laughs> Somebody's after you. What right. journalist do you admire? It's up to you. What journalist do you admire? I can't understand my prayer. What journalist do I admire? Well, I know about it. Uh, I got a lot of friends in the business. Well, I, you know, the, the crowd's getting arrested. Would you have any advice on breeding Dobermans? Yeah. Hang on. This guy's trying here. You know what? What's your opinion? You're being the expert on literature. And how much work means? What do you want written on your gravestone when you die? <laughs> 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 well, I really hadn't thought about it. Uh, well, there was a guy up in Maine somewhere, this is a dirty cliche, but there's a, there's a stone somewhere up in Maine that says, I told you I was sick. <laughs> no, I don't want that, no. No, I, uh... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go to my grave, uh, hopefully, really insisting that I was right. Well, well uh, there's a nice quote by Charles Manson in the paper today, saying uh, all he wanted to do was uh, get a bottle of wine and a railroad car. Uh, you'd be surprised if you wanted for a while. At, uh, let's see, what would you think? Give me a minute or so on that. I'll come around. We'll put that to the scanner. I'll be back on it. Yes. What do you think of legalizing pot? Well, we had a chance on that, and uh, it wouldn't do it. And now we're paying two dollars an ounce for uh, stuff that was, you know, two dollars an ounce uh, five years ago. No, it should have been legalized, but now they tax it. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's getting that way anyway. But it's de facto legal. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. But not right now. I'm thinking about 20 years or whatever. Yeah. I don't think it matters too much, but it, it would help uh, to bring us all into the, uh, the money economy. And, uh, well, marijuana is like the first uh, ranking agricultural crop in uh, what, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, California, Hawaii. Uh, Really, there's nothing dumb about uh, bitching about the national debt and deficits and all these problems. That if they made uh, tomatoes illegal in California, <laughs> there'd be a bitch. You know, there was a time when people had to get high on their on, on bananas, and uh, we don't handle uh, these problems very seriously or very uh, intelligently. I don't think. Now, of course, if you say let's make marijuana illegal, then somebody's going to come along and say, "Hey, man, I got some crack." Well, uh, I don't know. Who wants to talk about that? Come on, I ask you a question. Hey, I ask you a question. No, I, I want an answer from somebody. Hey, lie down over there. 
Uh, if marijuana should be legalized, what about crack? That's what somebody's gonna say. Okay. Well, why not? You know, why not? It's a drug. I, I just tell you that's what they're gonna say. I agree with you. Of course not. What do you think about the marijuana? What should you think? Boy, that's a hard argument to sell. That marijuana is a, a good drug and cracks a bad one. I agree, of course. <laughs> Well, I, I just said I, uh, nobody's ever over, over any crack. I don't, I don't deal with crack circles. But uh, if I said that marijuana should be legal, and then you said, well, wait a minute, here, I got this crack here, and I just got busted, uh, in any kind of, uh, you know, sense of, uh, of constitutional law, I'd have to defend your right to use crack. Right? That's the problem. In fact, the, the, uh, the weakest link in any civil rights case is always the defendant. It's an old uh, legal item. You know, I don't, what, what do you do about that? That's really a so do you, but you keep, go ahead, you keep weed illegal? You don't, you don't knock all the horse. Well, but it's true, you know, these are real questions that people have to deal with. Hey, Odie. And there, there Congre <laughs> but half of Congress believes that weed should be legal. And I hope to God there are not too many think crack should be. Hey, Odie. But what do you do with it? What do you, where do you stop? Where, is there a line between good drugs and bad drugs? I'm just telling you, these are, these are real questions that you have to deal with. Uh, natural. Cocaine, uh, what is, grows out of a green plant in the uh, 8,000. Well, wait, 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 crack is a, is a cheap form of cocaine. Well, you get, uh, where, where, which, where, how about heroin? What, what, what drugs, all right, what drugs should be legal? Marijuana? Marijuana? We got one vote. Give me a, give me a word. Naturally occurring drugs. Straight you know, folk. If I can tell you anything at all on this goddamn night, it is, and when I ask you a question for a word and a uh, definition and a noun, I don't need anything like naturally recurring. I would like to give, have you tell me what the hell you think should be legal. And don't give me this weird bullshit about naturally occurring. Give me a word. A word. You. Right there. Is it educational for you? Give me a word, a drug, a name. No, I got a, I got a guy here I'm trying to educate. Speak up, stand up. All right, mushroom, all right. Well, let me tell you that uh, that kind of chicken shit thinking is gonna get you in trouble for a long way down the road. If you can't answer a question like that, it's what should be legal and what shouldn't, you may as well go out and crawl under a goddamn car. <laughs> and uh, all right, somebody said psilocybin. I said psilocybin is not a uh, distinctly organic; it's a secondary organic, right? And so all we have is psilocybin and uh, acid. This is not the well. We just this this guy's thing about natural, right? All right, I, uh, we have acid. We got. Uh, <laughs> What do you think? I don't know. Whenever you're ready, we're good. Well, the crowd seems to be a little bit uh, dulled out. Uh -huh. Do you want to go? I don't know. No, no, I didn't. We just wind down to an artistic uh, finish. I don't hate to be crazy or vague, don't you? It's a risk to sound like this over here. I'm going to ask you what you think. I'll tell you my answer. No, I think he was just tough, really. There was a craziness in it. Yeah, crazy. I thought he was damn dumb man. He put five shots into the president. And, uh, he had a raw pill. Well, it was a horrible thing, but he did it. Thompson, can I ask you a favor? Doctor, please, what do you need? Would you please autograph my book for me? Oh.
Y'all fit it. Y'all fit it, Johnny. Now, uh, rip it off. When you uh, graduate from college, you have all these ideals yep. about everything that should be. Then you get out in the real world and you think, Jesus, just the Bible is fit. You have to deal with this wine all day. And then you reach the age about 30, whatever. And you think, well, shit, this sucks. <laughs> Maybe I can make a difference. And I'm thinking about running for political office. What do you, what do you think? Oh, nice yeah. Hey, God damn it, you waterhead bastards. Yeah, you should run for a yeah. yeah. And if this crowd of shitty eating dogs won't vote for you, you should go somewhere else, sir. You know, it, it, yeah. You should. Yeah. You should do it just because you, you want to find out. You can't make a difference. You really can. Now, whether it's the right thing to do forever, I, I really can't tell you that. But yeah, you, if you don't do it, if you, can, if you can't do it and you don't do it, you have missed a really good chance, one of your few chances in the world to really use the dollar they gave you when you were born. If you can run for office and if you can just, uh, Christ, I mean, you have to win, really. But it, it's a, uh, you can really, uh, yeah, you can't jerk them around here, dumb. <laughs> if you, if you, wanna, if you can run for office and have a good time and not to win, but you can scare them, then you make them, uh, what you want to do is control your environment. Yeah, that, uh, to be a slave to other people's whims in your environment, I think is a dumb thing to do. By running for office, and uh, it's, either, it's a nightmare at times, but it's a high kind of fun when you can really put, them, put their heads to the uh, grindstone. And uh, yeah, the best kind of thing is what I like when I did when I ran for sheriff, is just almost win. <laughs> really, just, you know, just jangle the whole thing. Ever since then, they've been uh, all over sheriff, you know, we've, all, our, all my friends have been sheriff. We've had a good, you know, a, a good enlightened uh, law enforcement uh, out there. But it is fun, yeah, you should do it. And if you, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be the eventual winner. All right. What do you think, Why are you not the guy of Hawaii? Yes, I am Lono. All right. <laughs> That's it. Well, they told me I have to go now, so I have ready to go. Get off.